Hey guys, welcome back to Voice Bootcamp. My name is Faisal Khan and in this video I'm going to show you how to add an administrative and HDS server for Cisco Unified Contact Center Enterprise. Now we're going to dedicate a separate server for admin server and this is the server that's going to do uh, pretty much uh, most of the configurations that we're going to do in this system. Now take a look at the desktop. Right now at this stage there are three icons in this desktop service tools and web setup all right so the first thing we need to do on this server is to go to um, web setup and add the instance that was created in the previous labs so we're going to log in as administrator So click on add one instance. We're going to choose East Coast Voice Bootcamp and instance number is going to be zero. So go ahead, save. Alright, so the instance has been completed. Uh, our next stop is to go to component management. Oh, sorry, we're going to create the databases first. So once the instance has been added on the website, what you want to do is go to UCCE tools, click on ICM DBA. Now it may give you a SQL Server TAMP DB data size, so we can go ahead and say expand it. So we'll expand the log as well. And you may have to restart the SQL Server uh, agent. All right, so in the instance, you got the admin AW database, the server. We have the instance. These are all our logger and stuff like that. So right now, we're going to right click on the voice bootcamp instance. Going to create new. I'm uh, going to say administration and data server. SQL Server is not properly configured. Do you want to configure it now? Sure. Just click OK. We're going to create enterprise data. And we're going to create AWDB first. So select the hard drive space, log, and click on create. So this will create that AW database. Once the AW database has been created, we're going to then create the HDS database, which will be used for historical reporting data. Okay, so the first database created. Now we're going to right click, create, and we're going to select HDS. Well, you can't select anyway, it's all automatically selected log file and go ahead create the HDS database so once this is done we're going to go back to the web setup and we're going to complete the web setup part of the administration server all right so the database has been created now we can close this uh, application go back to the web setup and what we're going to do we're going to click on data administration and data servers So let's go and add. We're going to select the enterprise, small to medium. We're going to choose the first role, the administration server real time historical database. Uh, primary database, uh, we're going to keep the site name. Site name, uh, site PR name could be, let's say, UCCE, or you can call it a voice bootcamp, uh, whatever uh, like a kind of unique name you want to define. These are additional options that can be accessed, such as accessing the internal script editor from online. It's asking you site uh, control, central controller connectivity. Now it uses a public interface. So you're going to say 42651.
side A, side B, side A, and side B, both router and logger respectively. We're going to make sure site A is a preferred site. And complete the setup. Now as this is being set up, just take a look at uh, your desktop. You'll start to see that certain fo additional folders will pop up that, that gives you more additional tools to do the day-to-day -day administration. Okay, so the administration server has been installed and you can see the additional tool uh, icon which for folders. And these are the administration tools that we use on a day-to-day -day basis for configuration of our system. Now we have to make sure that all the services are activated in this case before we can continue. So I will go to logger and I will go ahead and start the both services. I will then go to B, start both services on uh, side B and then of course I will start that mean distribution server as well uh, once that is done once uh, we're gonna give about a minute or so to stabilize and as soon as it does so then I will go continue the next step of um, initializing the database uh, for, for future configuration okay so at this stage, after all the services are running, as you can see, that's uh, site B, site A, and the admin, what I'm going to do is go to the administration tools. And before we can do our first configuration, we have to do something called initialize the local database. So you'll go ahead and look, click on this. And what you're going to do is click on start to initialize the database. and there we go uh, after the initialization you can click on configuration manager to configure your platform and you can see that the both platforms are uh, sorry the platform can be uh, configuration manager is open and various tools and utilities are available for us to do our configuration now you can make sure that all the services are running and you can do your uh, redundancy test we'll be doing redundancy test shortly to you know shut down this service and that service to see what goes on other than that for now this is pretty much it for administration server